All right, this project is titled Basic Assembly because it is very basic, and this may be a little bit of review, but it's just going to get us warmed up to the assembly part of Onshape, and then we're going to get into a little bit more difficult assemblies in our next um, video. So for now, we're going to get started by making a copy of an existing document. This is uh, something that someone else made, so right now all I can do is view it, so I need to make a copy so I can edit. I'm just going to go ahead and click Create Copy. As soon as the workspace loads, we're going to add an assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus symbol in the lower left-hand corner to create an assembly. All right, so this is a new workspace, and it's completely empty. The first thing you need to do is insert what you want to work with in this environment. So I'm going to click the insert button and if I quickly want to add everything everything from my part studio I'm going to go ahead and click on the root there with the components and it's going to add everything in. Now I'm going to place that by just dragging anywhere in my workspace and clicking to place it. Once and now I'm done adding components so I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark to finish that step. The next step I want to do is I want to copy this O-ring. So in our design, it modeled only one O-ring and I need two of them. So I'm going to, you can either select it here in the work area, or you can see you could go ahead and select the O-ring one on the left. You get the same result. I want to right click and choose create a copy of O-ring one. So now it's copied to the clipboard. I'm going to right click anywhere and uh, select paste. So now I have everything that I need to work with. And what I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix this object in place so that when I'm moving other objects around, there is one object that remains fixed in space. So I'm going to select the cylinder and then right click the object and choose fix. And immediately you can see if I try to move this object, it won't let me. There's a, like a not, do not symbol next to the hand and there's also that fixed symbol that appears on the object. I can also see over here in my list that the same symbol is there indicating this is a fixed part. So we have successfully fixed that in, in place. I'm going to go ahead and move everything else away so that I can create the relationships that I want with all of the parts. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to fasten mate the plunger to the swing arm. So this is the plunger here in the list here. I can select it just to make sure that is the plunger and the swing arm is over here. So I'm going to Go ahead and find the option at the top, which is a fasten mate. And what I want to do is fasten the top of the swing arm to the top of the plunger. So first thing I'm going to do is try to find the center or actually just hover over the surface that I want to reference. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so you can see this. So I want to reference this surface. That's where I want to place so if I were to just hover over the cylinder hole there, it's not really accurate where I'm placing my mate. So I want to first hover over the surface, then I'm going to hold the shift key down. That's going to constrain it to that, to that plane. And then I need to find the center of the hole that I'm aiming for. Which it looks like there's a couple different centers and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to choose this one here. I don't know. Let's just try one and see what happens. Okay, so I've found the center of what I think I want to use. And then the next thing I need to do is just find the center of the top surface of the plunger and click there. It's going to mate the two together. 
I'm gonna go ahead and orbit just to make sure that it's in the right spot. There's no gaps that I see, so I chose the right center. That looks perfectly lined up there. So I'm gonna click the check mark to accept that. So now if I were to move the handle or the arm, the plunger moves with it. So they successfully made it together. All right, next thing I'm going to do is mate the O-rings to the cylinder. These are also going to be fasten mates. So I'm going to click on fasten mate option and find the center of the O-ring. And then I'm going to go over to my cylinder. And if I hover over where an O-ring is supposed to go, there's a fillet there. And as I hover over the fillet, I'm given three different options. You can see the three little dots. My mate snaps to one of them, depending on where my mouse is. So when I hover over the, the fillet, you can see there's a bottom, middle, and top. That, that's with the top edge, bottom edge, and then where I want to be is the center. So make sure you're in the center of the fillet, and then click to place that. And then you can see, if you orbit around, it is exactly where you're supposed to be. So we successfully did one. Go ahead and repeat the process for the other one. We'll click the check mark. Choose Fasten Mate. Click on the O-ring and then find the center of the fillet. Make sure it's in the center. You see where we're at here. There we go. And then click to make the two together. Then click the check mark. So far, so good. Pretty easy. All right, this next step is I'm, I'm going to, um, I want to fasten the plunger. Actually, we already did that, so let's go on. Uh, I need a cylinder, create a cyl cylindrical mate between the plunger and the cylinder. So inside the cylinder at the very bottom, if I were to orbit to look down in there, there is a bottom surface. And I want to make that to the bottom of the plunger. So in this instance, I'm going to use something that's not even in the lesson, but it's kind of a, a helpful little trick. If you want to see the inside of an object, we want to add something to our current view. So I'm going to find in the options right below the view cube here. I'm going to select section view. This allows me to slice open a object. The first thing I need to choose is the selection, the section planes. I'm just going to click on the surface of the cylinder here. And immediately you can see it's slicing that object. It's also uh, slicing this guy right here. So I'm going to click on items to exclude. And if there's any extra items that you don't want sliced, you can select those to add them to the excluded list. And I could also exclude the, the O-rings if I wanted to because I'm not focusing on those. And then click the check mark when you're done with this view. And now I can make sure that I reveal all my different parts here. Why am I in this view? Where's my plunger? Oh, I wanted to exclude the plunger. Never mind. Let's get out of this. Let's try that again. All right. I want to exclude the plunger as well. So just the cylinder is sliced. Okay, now I can choose the cylindrical mate, which allows it to travel in two different ways. One is linear, so it's going to go up and down, but also allows it to rotate. So I'm going to choose now the bottom of the plunger, then orbit and view, which will be the center of the bottom inside the cylinder. 
And you can see as soon as I click on the two mates, it moves the plunger over. But for some reason, the swing arm is detached, which it should be mated to the plunger. And it still is. Just while I'm focusing on these two parts, mating them together, it's kind of ignoring that relationship. So if that ever happens and you want to make sure that everything looks correctly, you can click the solve button and it will put everything where it should be. And when you click the check mark, that's actually where it will be. So if you want to view how that's supposed to resolve itself, click the solve button before you click the check mark, just to make every, sure everything's in the correct spot, then you can click the check mark to accept it. Now I'm done with the split view, so I'm going to turn that off to turn the section view off. And there is an issue here. Now in physics, this would not possibly be able to do this. So I need to add some limits to to limit the travel of the plunger. So I'm gonna go back into the cylindrical mate, the last one that I just created. So I'll double click on that. And I wanna add some limits. So right now, the Z is what we're paying attention to on the plunger itself. So you can see Z is actually upside down. So as we're traveling up, with the plunger, we're actually traveling in a negative direction according to the Z orientation. So the minimum travel we want to do is um, negative 40. That's the lowest number in our travel relative to the point of contact here so it can travel up to 40 and stop that's the minimum travel the maximum travel is still an issue so because we want to end right where the surfaces meet and not travel any farther in the z-axis that would be a maximum of zero so now let me go ahead and test the range of motion and I can go all the way up to negative 40 which kind of sounds weird but we're traveling in the negative Z direction and then I can go back to zero and it doesn't travel any farther so now that is correct in the cylindrical mate properties click the check mark and then you can just go ahead and have some fun rotating and moving it up, up and down and there's these little circles the holes in the cylinder here where you can actually see the travel just to see the in, inner workings of the plunger there. That concludes this exercise.